Fist Forged in Shadow Tech really interested me when it popped up on the eShop. I hadn't actually experienced it before. Now, unable to obtain a code for it, I purchased it over on Steam about a week and a half ago and was just really impressed with what I saw. Now we finally have the Switch code in hands. We can obviously go over the performance as well, looking at both docked and handheld as well as frame rates. Developed by Thai Games, this is a Metroidvania in its truest sense. Am I happy with the Switch port or is it going to give me grey hairs? Well, let's find out. Fist Forged in Shadow Torch features an anthropomorphic cast, and you play as Rayton fighting against the Nazi-like Machine Legion. He spent the last six years in hiding, and now is his time to return to Torch City. As the narrative unfolds, he'll bump into old acquaintances and new, and it's a surprisingly coherent overall tale. Many of the characters are voice acted, with the gravelly tones of Rayton himself providing perhaps the best offering. Some other day. I'm not in the mood. It's not entirely devoid of cliche moments, and a few of the set pieces feel action movie 101, and although the antagonists bear the hallmarks of Nazi Germany, I did read one interesting article that said it could perhaps be a reflection of the occupation of China by the Japanese. Controlling Rayton is simple enough and you can swing his mechanical fist with a light or heavy attack. His moveset is ever expanded with upgrades. These serve to flesh out the combat and make it feel a little more like a beat-em-up. You'll unlock a number of different weapons, and the key is to switch between them during combat to keep your combo multiplier high, and then unleash special abilities to do extra damage. And not all adversaries can be taken out in the same way. Shield bearers will need a heavy punch, and your parry move becomes very important early on. The action is very fluid, and chaining together a number of attacks before grappling and throwing an enemy into his friend is topped off with the execution moves. Upon a badly beaten, staggered foe, they're the icing on a good combat cake, and the references to turtles in time were not lost on me. But why only a good cake, you might ask? Well, the parry system, yeah, it's not quite there. It takes a bit of getting used to, and it never really felt as intuitive as it should have done. As well as offering unique ways of attacking, the drill, whip, or fist also unlock different areas of the map. Turning the drill into a giant rotating fan blade lets you push open certain doors, or charging up that fist for a power punch will unlock others. The city is divided into several districts over a vast map. This is easily accessed and shows you all the areas you've previously visited, as well as highlighting where you need to go next. Now the mapping system is reasonably good and there is a fast travel system, but those were far too infrequent for my liking. To say that you have to backtrack a lot in a Metroidvania, well, it goes without saying, but if you're going to have a fast travel system, you might as well make a few more points to travel to. The level designs are very strong though. There are numerous hidden areas and off the beaten paths, and you're very often rewarded for your curiosity. Finding those chests filled with cash that you can then spend to upgrade your character, you might purchase the most valuable items such as the health or special power pickups, or you might do what I did and blow all of your cash on a brand new skin. It does absolutely nothing for my powers and skills, but it's blue. It does look quite nice. Interestingly, the Nintendo Switch version launches with a difficulty toggle, whereas when the game first released, I'm pretty sure it didn't have that. Regardless though, it's a well-balanced experience. There are some tough platforming sections and some fun boss fights. One thing I really appreciate is how easy it is to evade combat. That might sound a little unusual, but it mitigates some of the frustrations from retreading your steps. And traversal only gets easier as new moves are unlocked, such as the double jump. And that standard dodge dash is also really useful for speeding things up. As I'm sure you can tell, it's an incredibly impressive game for such a small team, and your movements are very responsive. A small bugbear would be the lack of a mini-map. You'll find yourself flicking in and out of that full map, and just wishing you didn't have to. It breaks up the pace a touch. Only a minor thing really in what's otherwise a very enjoyable game. I give the gameplay 17 out of 20. As for the controls, they're generally fine and very responsive. There's a real sense of freedom to double jumping around the world before helicoptering across a large gap, and your traversal is facilitated with tight controls. It's also nice to see that the attacks queue up, so although you can go in button mashing, you're rewarded far more for precise practiced play. Controls score 18 out of 20. 
That takes us on to the area that maybe some of you have been waiting for, and it's visuals, performance, and audio. Straight into frame rates, the game runs at an uncapped frame rate, and although it's targeting 30 frames per second, the Unreal Engine has run better on Switch. There are certain locations, such as the tower, where I saw the frame rate drop down to 25, and then up to 40, and then back down to 30. It's an unusual decision not to cap it out at 30. Now, despite this, it doesn't feel as bad as some games that I've played where they've used an uncapped frame rate. Certainly, the input latency is quite low, and with the tight controls, it does make it feel quite responsive. There's no floatiness here. From a visual quality standpoint, some things are great and others grotesque. The cutscenes look particularly poor. It almost looks like the resolution drops well, below 540. Just check out these characters. Now, having played these scenes on Steam, they were so crispy. Another thing I did notice, but it's across all versions, the bitrate of the movies used in certain cutscenes is far too low. You can see artifacting and shadows, and some of the animations don't look great at all. Now, with those gripes out the way, this small indie team have created a beautiful looking world. The parallax scrolling of some of the streets that you can see in the distance as you move around it makes it feel like you could suddenly change direction and head directly down rather than left or right. And there are other really striking moments. The use of lighting and shadow is also very strong, although again the Switch version suffers from a massively reduced shadow budget, particularly on the main character, but it's still serviceable. It's classic Unreal Engine 4 on Switch really. All the things that usually are an issue, things like streaming in textures, that happens here. It still can do some impressive things and it looks much better when you're playing in handheld mode. Plus, I know Noted that there is some overhead here as you're able to screen capture using the video record button. And when playing in handheld, text size is absolutely fine. Loading transitions were reasonably snappy, although some were notably longer when playing in handheld. I'd expect to see a patch fix this up nicely. Audio is strong across the board and the fidelity seems fine on the Switch version. The soundtrack really suits the steampunk aesthetic. The visuals and performance score 13 out of 20, and audio scores 16 out of 20. Fist is going to set you back £26.99 or your regional equivalent, and you're looking at about 10 to 15 hours of gameplay. We've got some fantastic Metroidvanias on Switch for comparison, and for me the price here is a little bit too high. If you're going for a 100% run, then yes, there's a lot more time there, but there's a little bit of work needed here with performance, and the version I bought over on Steam was also cheaper. All that said, it's a very good Metroidvania, it's one you're going to enjoy, and it's nice to play it on the handheld. Just be aware of the issues that I've mentioned. I'd give value full 14 out of 20. Overall then, Fist, forged in Shadow Torch, gets a switch up score of 78%. Let me know down in the comments if this is one you're picking up or if you already have. And as always, a big thanks to all of you that enjoy the content. If you want to, check out one of these other videos. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep your switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!